This hour? It's eight dollars. Eight dollars. It's five a.m. Of course. To go out like that, you ought to get ten dollars. Yeah, well, if you'd quit your job and marry me and move in here, you wouldn't have to go home at five a.m. and I could get some sleep. And the kids would like it if you did. I said the wrong thing. I do do that, don't I? Perfect. Good evening. Or oh, good morning. Or oh, whatever. It's morning, ma'am. It's another day. Do you have a room? Do I ever? Please come in. Fill this out, please. Is it for the night? No, I'll be here sometime. I have a lot of business in the area. Oh, good. Well, um, glad to have you. Hope you enjoy your stay. Yeah, I have a lot of business in this area. Well, there's a coffee shop about half a mile down the road. Mm. They open at six and their food's quite good. Uh-huh. What kind of business are you in, Mr. Oates? Uh, I'm self-employed. Self-employed, man. I've got to come back to Horse Creek later. The mayor wants to see me. What does he want? Uh, the sheriff's retiring. I think they're thinking of offering me the job, maybe. Maybe we could have dinner later. Hey, okay. 
great. The kids love to eat out. Pass a pleasant evening. Nobody likes a smart alley Blanche. Gee. What does she do, pose again? Some privacy. Cross over the village line and the voodoo drums start up. How do you know where I was? Jesse called you this morning. You weren't home. Where else would you be? Six o'clock mass. So he called me, said cover me. So here I am. Where's Jesse? I don't know. Said he'd be here. There was a belted kingfisher on the feeder this morning. Male or female? Male. I've never seen a belted kingfisher. Well, I looked it up in your book. That's what it looked like. They feed over the water. They don't, they don't, what would they, what would they be doing around here? Well, I don't know. I didn't invite the dumb thing here. They eat fish. They don't eat seeds. That's certainly interesting. Folks, hello. Hello, Jesse. Hello. Hello, Police department. No, the library's closed today. Yeah, the librarian was throwing up all night. Mm -hmm. Hey, George. Oh. Right. Yes, probably. Doing one? Okay, fine. I said, don't want it? I called you. You weren't home. I was out. I'll say he was out. Uh, knock it off, Blanche. Who was it, Jesse? Janet Bob is dead. Heart attack. I went to school with Janet and with her husband, Ralph. Ralph's in Boston on that VFW convention. We'll have to find him. It's gonna kill him. What happened? Well, her neighbor, Mrs. Appleton, found her. She called me. I called you, you were out. So I called Doc Lovell. Well, he's retired. Yeah, but you see, his kid came back from the city and is taking over his practice. So the kid came over, said it was obviously a heart attack. And the uh, kid seems very efficient. Well, it's probably at the Roosevelt. Well, what happened? When did she die? 
Doc says about five in the morning in her sleep. Uh, what? Ah, uh, it's nothing. Jesse, what? What? Well, it was just that uh, she didn't have a nightgown on. That's all. She was sleeping in the raw. Well, so what? I sleep in the raw. Swell. Well, where is she now? Rosie took her over to Whitman's funeral parlor. Rosie in her taxi? Why couldn't Whitman pick her up? Well, her hearse isn't running. You know, it's that old 54 Packard, remember? What a town. Yuck. Well, I think I'd better run over to the barbers. Make a routine check. Bye. See you later, alligator. Nightgown, Janet. That's swell that so many of Ralph's friends come down here to greet him. He's really gonna miss Janet. Oh, thanks. Hey, Daniel, I understand they offered you the job of sheriff at uh, Horse Creek. Is that right? Yeah. Their sheriff's getting married, that's why. And does she hate Horse Creek? <laughs> They're moving to Florida. She's young, you know. He's 53. How old is she? She's 20. <laughs> 20? Good Lord. Is she a local girl? There is no such thing as a local 20-year-old girl around here. Where have you been? They're all 47. That's a rule. In this <laughs> We've all been 47 while I grew up. They were 47 when I was born, 47 when I was 20. Well, there was one time there when I was 47 that they didn't look too bad. But by that time, I didn't look too good, so they wouldn't have nothing to do with me. <laughs> well, they got young women in Horse Creek. Well, you go ahead. You take the job. Get rich. Who cares? to ashes and dust to dust. The Lord giveth and the Lord taketh away. God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble. Therefore will not we fear. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. He restoreth my soul. He leadeth me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of mine enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil. My cup runneth over. Surely 
goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Hey, you got it out, Lee. All right, oh, simmer down. Come on, come on. Hey. Sit down. Sit down. Sit down. What do you want, Cap? Fajuada. What? Fajuada. Fajuada? Yeah. He wants Fajuada. He always orders that. Well, does he get it? No. They don't have any, Calvin. How do you know? It's not on the menu. Why well, is it on the menu? They got water. Right, one Fajuada. What do you want, Cyrus? All New York cut, please. Medium rare with fine aged potatoes, fresh squash, and a salad of fruit juice dressing. Swell. What do you want? Let me have some cold baked beans on whole wheat and hold mail. I need you. Sorry. Uh, excuse me, right back. Maybe. I'm sorry. Don't believe it. What? It's Ralph Barber. He's dead. He died. Who found them? Where's his pajama top? It was Mrs. Appleton. She brought him some supper. Pot roast. It's good. Swell. Where's his pajama top? You think something's wrong because he ain't wearing a pajama top? No. I, I don't know. Uh, did, you, did you call Whitman's funeral home? Yeah, they're sending Rosie and one of their guys over. Chief Barnes? Uh, oh. Hello, Doc. Thanks for coming over. Hi, Jesse. I can't get in. Oh. Well, that's not 47. No, that's from Horse Creek, not Mount Angel. Uh, your, um, hot roast is getting stale. Damn it, you're not. I don't see anything, Chief. No surface abrasions or bruises, no punctures, no needle marks. Myocardial infarction. His heart stopped and he died. It happens with couples who are close. First one goes and then the other, and quickly. Okay. Do you have reason to believe it might be something else? No, not really. Uh, no. I don't know. Uh, no. Uh, no, of course not. That's, that's stupid, isn't it? Who made this phone call to Taunton? Dollar twenty to Taunton. What is that, you got a sailor up there? Well, you're the only one who's here all day long. Who comes in here and makes all these phone calls? We got a $30 phone bill this month. To take it out of maintenance. Maintenance? I'm the maintenance. No, oh, no, we got our maintenance allocation. Where is it? Here, $15. $15, is that all? That was last year. They didn't give us any this year. This town is dying and we're the proof. You're getting out just in time, big fella. How do you know about that? Everybody knows about that. Uh, see you, Prince. Oh, by the way, what's that bird that has like a grayish, brownish cap-like thing that comes right... You mean with a white spot on the neck? White spot on the neck. And a very, it's a very tiny very bird? Very tiny bird. That's a pygmy nuthatch. Right, pygmy nuthatch. You didn't see one of those. No, what makes you think I saw it? You remember. Hello, Jesse. George. Let me see. I thought you were going to Ralph's funeral. I mean, uh, it's too much all at once. Both of them my same age. Makes me think too much of my own vulnerability. Besides, the whole town's out there. Oh, yeah? I'd better get over there and play traffic work. Hey, Daniel. You moving the horse quick? I don't know. I haven't decided yet. Sure. Hey, you want to take over here? Become chief of police? No. Uh, you know you can come with me. <laughs> Not me. Why? I live in Mount Angel. Well, you can still live in Mount Angel. They don't care. Yeah. You want to know what's going on at Horse Creek? 
Rules of the town government, Horse Creek. Here. Now, here's a list of some of the appointed officers of Horse Creek. Appointed, you know, like the chief of police. You ready? Dog officer, sealer of weights and measures, three fence viewers. Three. Three fence viewers. Four field drivers, and oh, this is my favorite. A job I'd surely like it. Moth superintendent. Uh, your peers right here. Rules of the town government. Now, not just 16 no blah, but now, today. A more superintendent. That town is rooted like a turnip in the 17th century. Horse Creek, you're welcome to it, Chief. Someplace. I think there's somewhere back there in the gourmet section. Next to the galoshes. Could be went over at Ralph's funeral. Ralph Barber? Yeah, Ralph Barber. Oh, I I passed on that crowd back in high school. It wasn't much of a crowd, huh? Oh, well, you know, they all thought they were something special. But I had to work after school. Right here. Every day. But they'd go out to Lake Wapawega and smoke the cigarettes and fumble around with each other. <laughs> you know, you know. <laughs> Big deal. Here we are. Ah, uh -huh. Pumpkin seeds. Says parrots love them. You got a parrot? No, I feed him to Blanche. Uh -oh. Well, this price tag thing is blank here. Oh, well. How's 79 cents? That sounds good. Uh, give you a bag, Daniel. They're already in the bag, eh? <laughs> That's fine, Myron. Oh, uh, yep, big deal. Uh, fumbling around with old Margie Savage out by the lake. You fumbled with one, you fumbled with them all, right? <laughs> I don't know about that, Myron. Margie Savage. You mean, is that crazy Marge lives out on Woods Road up in that old house? Mm -hmm. Well, was she attractive? Oh, yes, she was attractive. And look at her now. Well, look at me now. Jesse. Hey, Jesse. Jesse! Same age as Mr. Barber. Mrs. Barber, too, for that matter. I know, heart attack, right? About one o'clock, give or take. Yeah, but Jesse didn't have high blood pressure. He didn't. He didn't even smoke. He didn't do anything except live in Mount Angel. Oh, 
equipment? Yeah. Uh, who is this, please? Uh, hello, Moose. This is, uh, uh, this is Daniel Barnes. I, uh, I got another one for you. No, oh, it's over here at the station house. <laughs> it's Jesse. It's Jesse Chapin. <laughs> Yeah. Oh, yeah? How they do, huh? <laughs> okay. Mrs. Whitmer says they come in threes. Says everybody knows that. Janet, I didn't get their message, if they had one. She used to wear his letter sweater. He probably wore her garter belt, ain't you? Who? A lot, a lot of laughs, those two. But Jesse, Chase, he didn't take it from anybody. Oh, Myron, still with us, huh? Our Father in heaven, we thank thee for all who have walked in thy light, and especially for those near to us Where's George? And dear, in whose lives we have seen Where's thy George? Where's his dog? glory Where's his and dog? beauty. Where's George? Where is he? Where's George? May we know that out of the body, as in the body, George! they are George! with thee, and that when these earthly days come to an end, died of a heart attack. Would an autopsy show it? Would it, would it confirm it? Not necessarily. It depends. Are you talking about a myocardial infarction? I'm talking about Jesse and the barbers. Well, if there was no heart damage, and if the infarction caused death fast, no. The heart stops and he dies. Well, is that what happened? I mean, could, is, did, he, did his heart just stop? Is that it? Can, can, can you guarantee that? Daniel, he just died. He sat down and he died. Look, aren't there ways of killing people without it showing? There are certain drugs that are very hard to detect. Well, what do you do? You just inject them with a needle? Yes. And then you'd see needle punctures? Yeah. Well, that you could find that. Well, I suppose so. I guess the best place for that would be the tongue. Good Lord! Jesse died. He'd lost two old friends. You're leaving. The town is dying. He had nothing except George. So he sat down and he died. No, he did not sit down and die. Not Jesse, no. I don't believe it. I don't buy that. What are we supposed to do? Keep burying them as they drop? That's Jesse they put away there. 
Something's wrong about that. Something big is wrong about that. I don't know what it is, but I'm going to find out. You're going to find out. We're going to find out. We are? Yeah, you are. I am? Yeah, you. I'm going to dig up Jesse, and then we're going to find out what, what killed him. Autopsy? I can't do that. You can't? No. The, the county medical officer does all the autopsy. Who's he? My father. Your father? Your father's retired. Well, yeah, but now he's the coroner. Well, will he do it? Of course. Where? In our office. Okay, that's good. That's a start. Rosie will get the body and meet you over there. And I'll meet you there, too. You will? Yes, I will. I'm going to go into Greenfield and get a court order. And then I'll meet you at your father's house in uh, about two hours. And then we'll do it. We will? Yes, we will. We'll do it. Tell me something, Doc. Have you ever done it in a doctor's office? Cigarette? Yeah. An unfiltered one? No, sorry. That's how I trip at my age. Cancer's bad for you. If I was a rat, I'd be dead by now. All right, young fella. We've sent some stuff off to Greenfield, but they're not going to find anything. My daughter's packing it right now. Now tell me, what do you think happened to Jesse? Well, sir, I think three deaths in one week is more than coincidence. And I, I don't understand why, why two of them should be found with no, with practically no clothes on. Old people get cold quick. They don't go to bed nude. And then the Jesse's dog, George, he's vanished. He was in the police station with, uh, with Jesse. Uh, right, right there in the building. And a half an hour later, Jesse was dead and George was gone. Well, look, what did you, what do you think about Jesse? Did, did you, did you find anything? Well, I think she thinks we both think Jesse died of myocardial infarction, heart attack. Well, we did notice one thing—a kind of uh, odor on the chest. Turpentine. Turpentine. That's what he thought. She thought nutmeg. Nutmeg and turpentine don't smell alike. Well, we're sending off a piece of skin and we'll see. What do we see? We'll see whether it's turpentine or nutmeg. Then what? What do I tell us? I haven't the faintest idea. Daniel! What you doing in the bushes, Blanche? No, no, look, come here. Come here, it's George. I put some bird seed out, you know, like I always put the bird seed out. I found him out here. Menthol. Camper. And turpentine. And nutmeg. Menthol, camphor, turpentine, and nutmeg. Nutmeg? What do they call it? What's what called? Uh, what do they call it? I can't think of what they call it. It's, uh, it's for congestion, a vaporizing compound. Uh, that's right. An external application for local congestion. Congestion due to cold. Yeah. Did the dog have a cold? That's the same odor we smelled on Jesse. That's true. That there are no apparent signs. Well, daughter, we'd best get to work. Can we please do it now? Why not? Oh, I see. You've got a date. Believe it or not, Chief Barnes, I do have a private life. It's not so private. You can say that again. <laughs> you gonna stay and watch the autopsy, Daniel? Are you crazy? All right, daughter, let's go. For the heart. Have you got a cigarette? I'm about to say is merely my opinion, because
because there's no real way of knowing. At least I know of no way to know. The dog? George. George, right. Did not die of natural causes. There were burn marks. He was murdered. but some madman is wandering around Mount Angel, killing people in some extraordinary way we can't deduce. I don't even know if it's a... What? Yeah, right, right. I don't, I don't even know if it's a he. I don't know if it's some local guy or some stranger. I don't know why he's doing it. I don't know how he's doing it. Yeah, well, Mount Angel's never had this kind of thing before. Well, listen, I've never had anything like this before either. Some of the older residents are beginning to look at me sideways, like it was my fault. Well... Everybody who died was in their early 60s, whatever that means. Well, it means something to people in their early 60s, I'll tell you. Uh, we, we must have a bunch of people in town that age, so I, I guess we ought to make a list. I'm way ahead of you. I have here everybody in that name for between the ages of 60 and 65. Worked most of the night on it. What did you do most of the night, boss? See, that's broken down into three lists. This is south to Horse Creek. North to Vermont, and the village itself, plus Crazy March Savage. Hey, how crazy is she? Bad. I like her. I'll do March Savage, okay? So, here is your list. Here is Michael's list, and we'll do the rest. We will? Yes. We? We. 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 You. Me. Us. Morning, Daniel. Morning, Frida. Who's going to get it today, Daniel? Oh, neat, Frida. Do you think it's your turn? It's no joke, Blanche. Don't worry, Frida. He won't touch you. You're too old. <laughs> Miss, uh, I'd like these two, please. Hey, Myron, I don't know who it is, but somebody's going around killing all the old people. Well, it's about time. That's all I can say. Do Get rid of some old people. Just stand there and let them work like this. <laughs> let me help you. Get this bloody thing out. <laughs> Hello. I don't know if you remember me and Blanche. Blanche. Yes. I, I, I came to uh, warn you. I don't mean to alarm you. That's what you have to watch out for. So. Just take care of yourselves. Do that. get here from uh, Horse Creek, we'll, we'll divide the town into, say, quarters, you know? Mm -hmm. Like, uh, both sides of West Church and, and, uh, and both sides of Main Street, and then we'll just keep, we'll, we'll keep patrolling it all night, you yeah. know what I mean? What is that? all this with the Batmobiles. We got speed limits and noise laws around here. I just asked for the loan of a couple of men from your mayor. I don't need all the razzmatazz. Well, Mr. Parent said you wanted to show a force. Well, you certainly did that part. I mean, here in Blitzkrieg, the town, three old people are liable to kick off from fright alone. Now, come on inside. I want to tell you about some preventive police work we're going to do. It's a dying concept. Where do you get a hat like that? in the morning. Yeah, I know. A Bolivian fish hog just landed in your bathtub. Huh? Daniel, would you listen to me, okay? It just occurred to me. I was talking to old Marge. She was in the same class as Jesse. 
well. And Jesse was in the same class as Ralph Barber. Wow. Daniel, Ralph was in the same class as Janet, his future wife. Yeah. Don't you see? Everybody was in the same class. Everybody who died was in the class of 28. Daniel? Are you there? Can you hear me? Yes, I hear you. Why didn't I think of that? Oh, boy. Men. Listen, who else was in that class besides Marge? How should I know? You don't know? No, I don't know. You're the cop. You find out. Women. Is this? I'm sorry. You're astonishing. You'd make a fantastic cop. I don't want to be a fantastic cop. Gotcha, huh? Slide down the banister of life, you will always be one of the splinters. Your buddy, Jesse Chapin. Mm. You want to know what they wrote in my yearbook? No. Let us eat of the honey and drink of the wine. When next we're together, I will be thine. Love, Janet. That's Janet Harris. Janet Harris Barber, right? Oh, here it is. Here's a class list, 1928. Okay. Oh, We're all in alphabetical order, I think. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Number one, Ralph Barber. Should I write these down? Yeah. I don't have a pencil. You got a piece of paper? No. Okay, thanks. Oh, Barbara. Number two, Jesse Chapin. Mm -hmm. Number three, May Farrell, whoever that is. He must have moved or something. Uh, number four, Myron Flagg. He's all right. I talked to him earlier. Oh. Uh, number five, Janet Harris. Janet Harris, Barber. Yeah, right. Number six, Frank Knowlton. I don't know who that is. And Noel? K and Noel. K. I gotta find these people. Uh, number seven, Jesse. Uh, no, Jenny Lazarus. Number eight, Mary Ellen McElwee. I guess McElwee, I guess. I don't know who that is. Do you suppose some of these people are already dead? Already killed? I don't know. Number nine, Marjorie Savage. Oh, look how young she looks. Yeah, well, she wasn't old then. Uh, number ten, Edgar Wheeler. Whoever that is. W E? W H. Okay, number eleven. This is the last one. Abel Yetta. Good Lord. What? What? The Yetters. They live right over the line, right up Route 5 in Vermont. Nobody's warned them yet. Nobody's warned him or his wife, Jenny. Jenny? Jenny Lazarus, number seven, right? Yeah, it could be they're the same age. No service. I'm going to drive up there. You find a phone, get Michael, have him meet me at the Yetters. And then get the uh, new Centurions from Horse Creek and have him watch Marge. I'll go to Marge's myself. Blanche! I know. I suppose you're going to tell me to be careful, huh? No, I'm going to compliment you on your donuts. You ought to see my jelly roll. <laughs> oh. <laughs>
six to go. Five down, six to go. That should take him about a week. Then this will all be over and you can leave. It's not six. No? Uh huh. That's uh, Frank Knowlton, who was dead in World War II. Mary Ellen McAway, who died in the car crash in 1929. So that's uh, four to go. Two of them, natural causes. War and cars, uh, that's certainly natural. Uh, there's two living somewhere else. There's an Edgar Wheeler and May Farrell. And then the two still here, of course, Myron and Crazy March. Yeah, well, let's get all this cleaned up and you can, you can get back into town. That's where the murder is headed. Well, there's nothing to worry about in there. Russell and Mallory, I sent them over to watch over Crazy March. And I just saw Myron open up his store when I was on my way out here, so he's okay. Oh, yeah. What, uh, what about the thing out here? Same M.O.? Uh, no, uh... Yeah. I don't know, you tell me. Going over to the levels. I'll see you later. Okay, I'll hold down the fort. Yeah. Fine. And watch the radio. Yeah. And I'll give you a call if I need you. Yeah, you do that. Fine. Right. You get him in your taxi and get him over to Doc Levels, will you, Rosie? Okay, stop it! Knock it off! No, 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 You were due for dinner last night. It was Calvin's birthday. He missed you. You'll come tonight? I saved you a piece of cake. Carrot cake. Listen, Ma, I don't know where I'm going to be tonight. I see. No, you don't see. I don't think you do see. That's right. I don't see how you could see. Okay, Rosie, you take him to Doc Lovell. Myron's dead. I don't have right, time for any back. carrot cake. Everything's okay. The Yetis had the same burns, only not on their hands. <clears throat> what is it? What is it? See? He must have run out of ointment. Both the other and poor Myron here at the point of contact is no glop. He used that same sort of ointment that we smelled. But by the time he got to the Yetters, he must have left behind or forgotten it or whatever. At any rate, he used the machine without any insulator. What machine? What machine? There isn't any machine like that. How should I know? I don't know. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Let's start again. The murderer is using the machine, you say? That's right. Only there is no such machine like whatever he's using. Exactly. Perfect, I love it. Like an energizer? Yes, he must have invented some sort of machine to cause the heart to stop uh, short with a shock. Uh, only without an insulator, it causes burns. He must have induced Meyer to hold on to something, a conductor without any insulation. An energizer, a, a battery? Don't you see? An electrical power source. Power source? Why, why doesn't he just use a gun? There's your power source. Wait, what's wrong with this guy? What's wrong with him? He's nuts. That's what's wrong with him. Now, 
I use the phone? Hello, Mrs. Slate. This is uh, Daniel Barnes. Can I have uh, Marge Savage's number? Hey, thanks. I was... I was waiting. I'm, I'm sorry. I, I came back to apologize in case I was rough on you in town there. Hello, Blanche. How's everything going? Yeah, well, all right. She's, uh, she's the only one left now. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, all right, I'm coming. All right, just keep cool. I'm understaffed, and I'm, uh, I'm baffled, and I'm... Uh, I'm middle-aged and selfish and self-centered. I'm sorry. Has five checked out? Five? The candy eater. Oh. Five, Mr. Justin Oates. Yeah, he settled up last night. Said he had to leave early this morning. Hello, Daniel. Hello, Hetty. I gotta go. You always say that. The same four words. You get up and you say, I gotta go. Every time. Every single time. Sometimes you don't even get up before you say it. You just lay there and say, I gotta go. And then you get up and you get dressed and you go. So go. Okay, Russell? All secure. What happened to Mr. Flagg? He was murdered. The man walking around town with a machine. A portable murder machine. So if you see him, Russell, don't shake hands. Justin thought so. Mr. Justin Oates. The candy eater. I was telling you about the engagement trip to Boston. All uh, right. You and Justin? I uh, know. All of us. Who are you? Oh, I'm sorry, Miss Savage. That's my fiancé. Uh, does he always follow you around? Yes, ma'am. Always. Like Justin. Said he had to leave early this morning. Uh, you were telling us about uh, Justin, ma'am, when you and he were making that trip to Boston. 
There were six of us in the class going to be married after graduation. Ralph and Janet, Abel and Jenny, and Justin and me. We're still going to do it. It's still our plan. I don't see any reason to change it. As soon as he comes back, we'll do it. You and Justin? What are we talking about? President Hoover? <laughs> Has Justin been away long? Uh, yes. Well, he had to go. But he is coming back. Then... We're all going to be married and have a honeymoon at the Copley Plaza. <laughs> Clean the room? Yeah, yeah. What did you find in there? Well, I don't know. I dumped it in the you waste put it in bin. Here? Yeah, sure. Is everything in here you found? Yeah. I want to know everything you found in Oh, some candy wrappers. I don't know. All right, you said he ate candy. What else did he do? Well, I don't know. All right, never mind. I got it right here. Yeah, it is empty. Active ingredients camphor, menthol, spirits of turpentine, cedar leaf, nutmeg. Quote, rub it on, close quote. Is that from room number five? Yeah. You? Oh, uh, what do they look like? Fat, gray-haired. Well, kind of cheesy clothes, kind of like yours. You know, a salesman. A salesman? You mean he had, like, a sample case, like a big suitcase? Yeah, how did you know? Oh, I'm infallible. Unless well, somebody tells me where to go and what to look for. I'd make a great law enforcement officer. Yes, sir, he as a kid hopes he was booted out of high school before graduation. Some sort of a big scandal. I don't remember what it was all about, but it sure caused a commotion. What happens to a man that makes him come back after all those years and kill his peers? Well, they don't kill their peers, usually. That only happens when a kid has had a pretty rough time of it. And somehow becomes embittered by what he considers a betrayal of his childhood. And he's apt to blame the failures of the rest of his life on the people that he knew as a kid. And the only solution for him appears to be to <laughs> take them out as he checks out. Bang. Bang. Usually. No Oaks could be six hours away from here by now. If he left. Yeah. If he left. But he isn't finished. No, Michael. Marge went to bed at 7.30. No, I haven't even seen her. No, I think Justin's out there in the woods somewhere. He's... He's waiting. He's eating his candy bars. Tell him Marge is dead. And, and no, Russell and Mallory are out there too. The house is lit up like a Christmas tree. He's not going to hit tonight. Tell him I'm dead. Yeah. Tomorrow we're going to go out and get him in the light. All right? Tell him you're dead. Okay. Yeah. Good night. Here you go, big boy. Get off on that. That is it cat food? What about you? Oh, I wouldn't eat that, John. It's just tuna fish. It's tuna fish. Tuna fish, look. It is cat food. <laughs> no, it's not cat food. It's not. It's tuna fish. Just eat it, will you? Wow. Hmm. Want some in the drink? What do you got? Evaporated milk? Oh, some beer. Crazy match with beer? She's a swinger. Nobody who goes to bed at 7.30 is a swinger. Oh, gross. Russell, there's some tuna fish in there in case you get hungry. That's cat food, Blanche. I wouldn't eat that stuff. Did you eat yet, Russell? No, not yet. I'll right, go on into town and eat. Take Mallory with you. And then uh, stay there. You're off duty. Oh, I thought we were... Good night, safe. Russell.
last time? Well, when they caught us that night when they turned the lights on, we thought we were all alone. We thought the house was empty. So we were playing strip poker, then strip tag. So then we were running, even Adam, through the house. But they were all in the parlor. And when I ran in, they threw on all the lights. And the big study was right behind me. So then we both were in our birthday suits in front of everybody. It was me. It wasn't me. I was back in the parlor with the rest of them. It was a surprise birthday party for her. It was her 17th birthday. It was my idea. We were engaged. We were engaged, and there she was, stark naked with that awful, 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 awful. They left me out of town. Got them. I got them all. And I got him. I got him. Yeah. I even got that awful little dog of his. <laughs> and now, uh... Now I'm doing it! that Jesse went out to Marge's all those years? Yeah. I don't even think Justin will go to trial. I'll probably stick him away in a state hospital and forget it. <sighs> well, this town will never forget it. To think anything like this could happen here. Wow. Can you imagine what it's like in a big town? I mean, imagine what it's like in Boston or Chicago. Or even Horse Creek. What's going on there? Well, I've got some messages. Um, one, uh, Mrs. Tate, of course. Two, Doc Lovell, the, uh, junior partner. Three, the Horse Creek Town Board. Are you coming to Horse Creek today? Four, essentially the same message. Five, same message. Where are you? When are you coming? There was an ivory-billed woodpecker in the feeder this morning. The ivory-billed woodpecker is practically extinct. There are only a dozen or so isolated specimens still existing. And most of those are considered to be in Louisiana or southeastern Texas. What you saw was a pileated woodpecker. The ivory-billed woodpecker has a white bill and some white on the back, whereas the pileated woodpecker, which is what you saw, has a slate-colored bill and a black back.
<laughs> Why don't you go if you're going? I'm not going. I'm staying here. You staying? Yeah, I'm content here. How old are you? Seventy-one. No, I mean it. How old are you? Twenty-nine. <clears throat> I'm thirty-seven. That's wonderful. When you're 98, I'll be 106. <laughs> That's really funny. <laughs> when was it you first figured out you were going to marry me? <laughs> Where'd you get that idea in your head? I thought dinner, maybe. You know, <laughs> Marry me? <laughs> Like this, these positions for the rest of our lives.